we had an absolute belief that Christchurch and New Zealand needed businesses to keep running, to keep operating. There was no chance to run. You had to get everything going up and running as soon and as quickly as you could. You do tend to kick into survival mode, I believe. I mean, we, we are a, an animal and we have this instinct within us. And I think part of what a lot of us has got, have gone through, that the, the strong people, obviously, we come out and we've got to be strong. There's a sense of responsibility to show show leadership, to show uh, uh, steadying influence, you know, be the, be the person that's responsible to make things all right. One of the questions I, I asked them straight off the bat, I said, I need you to commit one way or the other. You know, if, if we can get this building up and going, are you prepared to come back? We need to make a decision right now. And... Um, we had a unanimous response to that. I asked for a show of hands, it was unanimous. As soon as we sort of realised, you know, the staff were safe, we were over it, um, it was just another one of those sort of hiccups that comes along in, in, in the business. Some things that the business community went through in those first few weeks after September, I think set the tone to survive February and survive June. Because we kept operating, we, we had this attitude that you could beat it, you could win and you could keep operating. Your instincts were you were going to survive, you had to push through. I as CEO had an obligation to all of my employees. If we'd just gone, oh, it's no good, this is too terrible, then and left it, our business would have failed. We knew that we had to try and, and get ourselves through. We had offshore customers that were concerned, but would there concern allow us to take longer to supply a product and I was thinking no. And they say oh it's terrible you've got an earthquake uh, on the first day and then two days later they say where are my goods, where are my products. So you had to keep going and if you stopped then our business would stop. At the end of the day business is business and we had, we had um, two actually large export projects on that needed to be delivered within only, within one was within a week of the earthquake and it had to go to port and had to be shipped. So you know, we had those worries as well to work out. They contacted us, they said, you know, what's our situation? I said, we will get you going. Do not, don't back out on us, we will get you going. Most Christchurch people are pretty resilient and they're pretty stubborn and they want to guts it out on their own, but you actually have to know a bit about how they are and what they need and and how they're feeling, because otherwise you can't help them. The key thing for me was just to be walking around, talking to the staff, making sure that if they wanted to talk to someone that I was there, and, and I just listened to a lot of stories. We had people who took their products and went into my general manager's garage. There they had showers, they had, uh, they had food, uh, which they didn't have at home. <laughs> And, and they just really got stuck in, and, and we, we didn't miss a beat. The way that the people acted during those, those emergencies was just absolutely fantastic. Uh, people came in uh, and really mucked in together to get things sorted out. It was quite a proud moment to sort of run a company where people sort of all kicked in, knew what they needed to do, and just sort of got on with the task of sort of rebuilding it, picking things back up, literally picking things back up. And, um, and getting on with it. It came back to just being a, a big family and a community where everyone sort of chipped in and helped each other. It's not a way I'd choose to build morale, but by crikey, it was, it was, it was really quite uh, a moving thing to see what people can do when they all buy into the same picture.